Hello viewers, this video is very specifically about the migration strategy. Like how to migrate your current traditional data warehouse platform into Amazon Web Services powered Redshift platform. So that way our warehouse is modernized into the cloud ecosystem. So let's take a look at how many uh, steps are involved and uh, what kind of an architecture that we should follow. Everything will be taken care of in this video. Let's see the architecture. That is the key item. Before you pin down anything to do a major undertaking, the architecture is the key uh, so that you have a thorough understanding about um, how the, the components within your data warehouse is uh, essentially migrated um, under a best practices scenario. So what you see here is your the overall AWS cloud migration architecture. What you are seeing here is uh, our uh, traditional architecture with multiple operational source systems uh, like a sales, e-commerce, POS, marketing and flat files uh, sources. And we are funneling it through uh, ODS, a persistent non-persistent area, area uh, which are primarily on Oracle databases. Sometimes the sales and the operational source system may be in Oracle environment or, or other or DBMS platform. But let's assume that you have combination of both here. Um, and now we, the final output is the data warehouse. Um, this, this video, we are very specific about migrating your data warehouse, which is where, what you see here in the big box in your um, um, AWS Power Platform. There are 11 different steps um, that uh, um, Amazon Web Services, um, you know, uh, given as a recommendations or best practices to move. I'm actually um, uh, disintegrate them into multiple small, uh, smaller units for your better understanding. Um, so there are, uh, uh, you know, the very first thing is you need to launch your RDS instances uh, in a VPC. Uh, by using a cloud formation template. So before we get into it, I just want to give some overview about uh, the, the, the availability zone and uh, AWS VPC. So people would think that is my uh, cloud ecosystem is safer because it is not in my on-prem environment. Anybody can take advantage of it. I would say certainly not. It is extremely secure, very powerful. Uh, in fact, there are three or four layers before you could step into your server. There are a lot of private keys, public keys, and, and security algorithm in place. Uh, so you have, um, you, you know, secure data in the cloud environment. So Amazon Web Services, we, you have, that is the ecosystem. Then it comes into VPC, which is a virtual uh, private cloud which is for you exclusively uh, because uh, this is the logical separation I would say even it's a physical you would never know whether it is a physical but it's a logical separation that your subscribed entities like uh, servers are within your premises you no one can step in and you can't go out as well so that is very important once you get into the uh, the AWS console get into the gateway you are in you cannot go out to other environment unless and until you have your subscribed platform or you have the keys in place. Otherwise, you, you, you are just literally in, into this environment. So that's basically I want to highlight the VPC and the availability zone. Availability zones are, for example, if you live in New York or East Coast, right? You, pre you, you um, prefer to um, store your data in East Zone, right? That is one availability zone. But some companies, they want to keep uh, multiple copies, They're like a global organization. They keep one copy here in the East Coast, another, another copy in the Pacific Coast, in the Western region. So they could, that's for the disaster recovery plan. Uh, but that is a kind of a separate topic by itself. Let's assume that you have one availability zone uh, for your current uh, um, architecture. So that's basically what I want to uh, highlight it here. Um, coming back to step number one, launch your RDS environment in a VPC using a cloud formation template. Let's see what, uh, what I really mean by the cloud formation template. Um, so you can use the AWS data migration 
uh, service which is DMS uh, to migrate your data to and from most widely used commercial and open source database such as Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Redshift, Aurora, MariaDB, uh, MySQL. Um, so it is uh, very important that you must need to have this cloud formation template. Um, why we need it? Uh, because it will really help you uh, to do the process. Um, uh, let's say uh, the, the template what you are seeing here, it is so important in such a way that um, you know you could define the name of your stack name, you need to define the stack name and what the source is. In our scenario, the source is basically uh, the Oracle data warehouse and the target is basically like a, a redshift which is like a columnar uh, data warehousing environment. So you define that um, and that's basically what you see how we could uh, be able to you know configure that uh, stack environment. Uh, keep a note that the client IP uh, which is 00001 uh, we will we'll talk about that in later section. So before you begin use this cloud formation template to create your Amazon RDS resources for this walkthrough. Uh, Amazon Web Services can take up to 20 minutes or more uh, to create the stack um, in the RDS uh, uh, instance. Step number two, install the SQL tools and AWS schema conversion tool on your local uh, environment. Um, because this is so, uh, so critical, uh, why we need it? Because uh, the, the, there are ways you need to connect to your source environment also to the source uh, the target environment uh, but there are open source uh, options available so you could take advantage of that uh, sql tool set um, not not oracle sql developer I'm, I'm here giving an example of the sql workbench from uh, mysql download it i will provide you the link on how to download the workbench in the description section and uh, also because the SQL, this SQL client is a free open source and it is a extremely D DBMS dependent. And also along with that, uh, since our data warehouse is in Oracle environment, download the JDBC driver uh, for your Oracle database release. Whatever the release that you have, we have 11G or 12G um, or 19C, whatever you have right now, download that. Um, along with that, download the Amazon Redshift file I'm also giving you the link over down here because you must need to have these drivers uh, using your SQL tool it can connect back to the environment um, for example um, what you see here uh, is the workbench this is how it looks like and afterwards you need to go to your Oracle manage the drivers and specify the driver you download it for Oracle and similarly you need to do it for the uh, Redshift as well after that, we are getting into the step number three to test the connectivity uh, and uh, uh, to the Oracle database instance, and you can create your sample schema, like uh, and, you know, just make sure that you are able to connect using the SQL Workbench, and uh, make sure run your SQL and say SQL statement on top of the sample schema or an existing schema. Either way, it works. Um, after the the cloud formation stack has been created, make sure the test connection is successful. Okay. Uh, that's very important and this is how you create uh, on on the workbench you create the selection pro connection profile and i'm creating here rds oracle connection uh, define the uh, credential the username and password uh, of your oracle environment automatically the uh, the url will also be created so this is this is very important for you. Uh, so that way the SQL uh, environment connecting back to your uh, um, the Oracle connection. See this example is I'm I'm keeping the environment in in the AWS RDS itself. But you could connect to your local. Our our scenario is local. So you, if you do the driver, the JDBC driver will instead of that US West one dot RDS dot Amazon AWS dot com, it will be your local server IP address and the port number is anyway fifteen twenty one. So space, make sure that you are able to connect to your source environment and then you run run SQL statement. You either create a um, a new copy because the aura 
admin is uh, your login as an admin you could connect to any uh, the schema like that a user and you run any statement like you create some tables and uh, you run a select statement against an existing table and compare the results making sure they are working fine step number four uh, test the connectivity on the uh, Amazon Redshift database, which is your target environment. What you see here on, uh, see my mouse, this is your target environment, right? And this, the, the, the source here, you could, um, for the, the, the diagram which I posted, it is, it is the, the URL. I'm assuming that it is an Oracle RDS, but we are taking it from the Oracle data warehouse local copy. So basically the connection name is uh, is something instead of AWS, it will be a local IP address, which I stated that earlier. Um, so now uh, test your connectivity and make sure that, uh, that the connection is successful if your connection is unsuccessful. Ensure the IP address you assign when creating the cloud formation template. Remember, I ask you to remember that temp, that IP address 0.0.0.1 uh, is the one that you need to make sure you are connecting to, right? If not, uh, you need to change that and uh, make your connecting to the right, right IP address. And this is your Redshift connection. And in the Redshift connection, you specify um, the URL that is connecting to your Redshift. This is in AWS. This will remain same. Here you see is US hyphen West hyphen one. This is the availability zone. For you, it could be different if you're in East or in, in uh, Asia Pacific or EMEA, it would change. Uh, but this is basically automatically created based on, based on the connectivity that you do, all right? And then you use your AWS SCT. Before you migrate your data to Amazon Redshift, you convert the Oracle schema, which is your traditional Oracle data warehouse to an Amazon Redshift schema as described in the following diagram, uh, which is you specify uh, the, the project in your uh, console, specify the name of the project, and uh, um, you specify your source database engine is Oracle DW and target database engine is Amazon Redshift. Then get into the next section, you specify oh, my Oracle database uh, credential, similarly my uh, target Redshift database credentials as well. You specify that uh, before I run my connectivity. Uh, this is where I will be using to take my Oracle uh, schemas residing in data warehouse, all the tables and just loaded into the Amazon Redshift. Very important piece of information here. Then step number seven, uh, which is um, um, before the step number seven, I mean, I just want to highlight that uh, if you are done with your table creation, make sure you are able to validate the total number of uh, schema, the tables from your sources um, and make sure that it is being properly, um, you know, converted into the AWS Redshift schema. Then uh, create an AWS DMS replication instance. Uh, remember that we, we spoke about that, right? And uh, this replication instance is so critical that I want to highlight here. This is the architecture um, internally, which is transparent to all the users. You don't have to worry about it, but you must need to create the replication instance. The way the data is being loaded, uh, taking it from uh, instead of Amazon RDS, which is your, I'm giving both options, Amazon RDS or Oracle Data Warehouse, which is our Oracle Data Warehouse source uh, using, using the, the, the SCT and, and also the DMS tool set. You take the data and then uh, load that into the DMS replication instance. Then it will be loading that into S3 bucket. I'll go and define, I mean, give details about the S3 bucket in a different video. And then it will be loaded back into the uh, Amazon Redshift. Step number eight, um, you need to create the AWS DMS source and the target endpoints. Uh, why we need the source and target endpoints? While your replication instance is being created, you can specify the source and target database endpoints using uh, AWS Management Console. However, you can only test the connectivity after the replication instance has been created because the replication instance is used in the connection. So this is the source connectivity 
and this is the target connectivity i hi i i mask the server name uh, which is your ip address of a local uh, traditional data warehouse environment and the username and password you need to specify here uh, this is important why we need it and this is where we be, will be going to take the data and load the data back into the uh, the traditional i mean the cloud uh, ecosystem so using the aws DM, dms tag, task you can specify what schema to migrate and what type of migration you can migrate existing data uh, migrate existing data and replicate ongoing changes or replicate the data changes only this walkthrough migrates existing data only so what that's basically what i will be going to show it now um, there are a couple of steps which i stated create the task first uh, specify the uh, source endpoint target endpoint and the migration type is, is so critical it will be depending upon your use case but i'm saying here migrate the existing uh, data and also i'm uh, uh, selecting the start task on create and then uh, task settings you specify this is also a very important piece that what what should i do if you want to drop the tables every time you move the data from your traditional warehouse into the cloud or you just only load the uh, the data itself then in that case do nothing and those don't do anything if you want to don't drop the table but just truncate it just reload everything from that that's also it's feasible so it's basically that then you need to use the truncate option and then uh, you specify that and you, you in in the task section you would be saying oh, okay all the list of tasks that you created and the status of the task where is it sourcing from where it is loaded and what type of talk, the type it is everything it is one uh, comprehensive view about the list of tasks that you created using this modify button you can modify the task and you could also select the task and you could start and stop and if you want to delete you could delete as well right and then the test uh, step number 10 uh, verify your data migration whether you are done with the migration successfully um, so this is basically uh, the after you run the migrate schema using the start button uh, it will show you completed then beneath the scheme beneath the screen you would be seeing the list of tables under the schema uh, total number of records being loaded through the migration process right you could see it and compare the result this is the one way you could see it take this result and compare with your source making sure the numbers are matching or you could use your um, the sql workbench run this statement directly connecting to your redshift and run the select count of stuff from each tables like channels customer products promotions and sales and just you know see the results if they are matching between your source and target it means your migration is successful um, now the last piece here is very important the step number 11 uh, delete your aws dms sources uh, delete your cloud um, uh, you know aws cloud formations task uh, task why we need this uh, because after you completed this walkthrough um, you must need to perform because it is necessary to do the steps in order because some resources cannot be deleted uh, if they have dependencies upon the resource and it is very important that uh, the deleting these resources it's so important uh, so that you will not be charged unnecessary for the, the replication instance There are um, several other steps like a CDC feature, which is a change data capture. Uh, if you are not uh, dropping the table, truncating the table every time or loading the massive amount of data from your data warehouse into the newly created Redshift, you could leverage the feature of change data capture. It means whenever the new set of tables or data is being created, an incremental data, only those tables will be, data will be migrated back into the uh, target redshift environment using the CDC feature. I'm giving you the link with all the details. And uh, basically, I, I hope I covered the basic migration process uh, from your traditional warehouse into the AWS. Uh, please uh, like the video if you do and share with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day